Regardless of how anyone feels about how Batman Arkham as a series handled villains, there were quite a few of them throughout the entire franchise. Now, a lot of the times it did come back to a focus on just one or two, especially because the relationship between Batman and the Joker was so thoroughly, I would say, dissected, deconstructed, and put center stage in this franchise. But a lot of other villains still did show up, make their mark, and really help bring the worlds to life in each game from Arkham Origins all the way to Arkham Knight. And today I wanted to take a look at five villains that I think really should have been in the Batman Arkham franchise, five that I believe were just missing, some of these were referenced to, and really could have helped flesh out that world even more. So hey, this is five villains that should have been in the Batman Arkham series and were missing. Number five. The first villain we have is Prometheus. Now this would have been a very interesting anti-Batman villain. An anti-Batman villain is essentially just, it's a villain like Batman that serves as a counterpart. Now this would be someone who has their own gadgetry or weapons. It's really just kind of like Batman. I mean, that's the easiest way to explain it. There's quite a few of these, but Prometheus, Wrath, Owlman, those are some of the most common and most popular ones. Prometheus, is really a mirror to Batman in several key ways. The biggest and most blatant one being his parents' death. Now his parents did deserve what they had coming to them in a lot of ways because these were spree killers. Uh, his parents were not innocent people. They murdered quite a few people and they were eventually gunned down by law enforcement officers. However, young Prometheus was actually there watching. He saw his parents die, much like Bruce Wayne watched the death of his parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne, and because of that, he vowed to get vengeance on those who killed his family. He really suffered a lot of trauma from this event, his hair even turning white, and he pretty much decided to go on and become a criminal later on using the wealth stashed around the world by his parents and kill a lot of police officers and also challenge Batman on several occasions in the comics. He's referenced actually more than once in this franchise, but most heavily, it really appears in Asylum. He does get his own character bio, which we do know the canonicity of those character bios is really just sort of out the window in the first game because they're really just more references to the comics and then the, the it's like the characters are expanded over time in the Arkham continuity itself following Asylum. However, we do see an actual newspaper clipping with him in it as well as a riddle and a bio acknowledging his existence in that world. Now, it is important to note actually, he was going to appear in the season of Infamy in Arkham Knight in the DLC, but he was cut according to early in-game text files. We don't really know why. Uh, there has been different speculation from a lot of people with one of the one of the heaviest speculations on the Arkham Wiki especially being the fact that he was a new character and didn't tie in quite as much to the already existing villains and roster of villains that we had going into the season of infamy but he would have been great to see as a counterpart to batman he could have really provided a probably a more solid role in that sense than the arkham knight did himself but hey sadly prometheus was nowhere to be seen number four Play. Keeping with the theme of lore, I suppose, Maxi Zeus is another one who would have been extremely interesting to see in the Arkham franchise, and he was just missing. He was gone. However, he had several blatant references. We do know that he believed that he was Zeus, the Greek god, and we actually do see a cell in Arkham Asylum in the patient pacification chamber in intensive treatment, showing us that he was kept there for quite a while. He had a Greek mythology book there as well, and you can see his nightclub in Arkham City in the game. Uh, actually, it's pretty apparent. It's even neon and lit up. Now, he did disappear from Arkham Asylum after he got an extra dose of electroshock therapy, but we were able to find out that his nightclub is still in operation in his Arkham City story that can be unlocked during the game. That actually led a lot of people to believe that there was uh, something of a 
operation going on either in his absence or that he had been moved or escaped into his nightclub because he went missing from Arkham Asylum then no one knew where he was but it's very possible that he was either smuggled into Arkham City uh, by Tiger or that he had actually gotten in there himself back to his nightclub before Protocol 10 and the walls were put up and all of that. Nobody really knows. However, they do reference that it is possible as well that he died in Protocol 10. That's something a lot of people have sort of speculated on, but no one knows. He had a cult that would have been very interesting to see. We do see that a little bit in Deacon Blackfire, but we could have had a fully, I guess, uh, a fully expanded storyline based on that or a side storyline based on Maxi Zeus's cult. And because his nightclub is there, really all we had to do was provide the interior of that and we could have seen a really interesting villain inspired by Greek mythology. Sadly though, he was relegated to just being a reference throughout the games. Number three. three. Next up we have one that is going to actually be the key focus or one of the key focuses of Gotham Knights, the upcoming Bat Family game, which is not set in the Arkham continuity, and that is the Talon and Court of Owls. Now the Court of Owls is a secret society that controls or influences Gotham from the shadows, and the Talon is essentially their enforcer. A Talon is an assassin sent by the Court of Owls to retrieve or kill any enemy of the court that threatens their order. Now, these characters were introduced in Scott Snyder's Court of Owls storyline in the New 52, Batman Volume 1 Court of Owls, and Batman Volume 2 City of Owls, along with a lot of tie-ins with other authors, Bat Family works at the time. And it is, it, these are some of the most popular recent year Bat villains. It's not super often that Batman gets new villains that are really good, and the Court of Owls and the Talons were considered amazing top tier villains for Batman. Now, it is interesting because these villains are actually referenced in a storybook underneath Pioneer's Bridge, where you can see the entire rhyme describing the Court of Owls watching and controlling Gotham. It's all right there, so we do know that the, at the very least, the myth of the Court of Owls exists in the Batman Arkham universe, and there are also statues that resemble the Talons on the roof of the Gotham Royal Hotel. Now this could either be in universe, in lore, it could be that these were sort of created at a time when the myth of the Court of Owls was at an all time high in the past, or in other words, in just an Easter egg standing, it could just be that they threw the talons in there. However, both WB Games Montreal and Rocksteady seem very intentional with how they place things. So it does seem like this is very likely confirmation that these characters exist in the Arkham universe, or at the very least that the nursery rhyme and the lore around them exists and does scare people in Gotham City. Number two. Next up we have Arthur Brown. This is the Clue Master. Now this is a character that is actually not that popular in terms of comic books or even in terms of the Arkham universe. Very seldomly mentioned and he was actually mentioned in Arkham Knight. Uh, this is a character who essentially, people get mad when I say this, but he sort of knocked off the Riddler's uh, entire shtick. I mean, he leaves clues around, he's sort of a riddly guy. He was originally actually the host of the game show Price Change, and you can see that that was filmed at Panessa Studios in Gotham City, but he turned to crime later on, becoming the Clue Master. Now, this is an interesting character. Often in the comics, this character is tied to Stephanie Brown, his daughter. So, they could have really gone a whole path with this, but Stephanie Brown was sort of ignored in terms of the Bat Family in the Arkham Universe, never really brought up. And Arthur Brown is only thrown, he's like thrown away in one line stated by thugs around Gotham City, which is a little hard to find. I'm not sure if I'll be, I'll have been able to find it for this, but he would have been interesting to see. One of the more interesting depictions of this character is in The Batman, not the new movie, but the cartoon. So if you are interested in checking out who Arthur Brown kind of is, I would say a very weird perverse version of him. That's sort of a option to go to. It's not the normal Clue Master, but it's very fascinating. Number, number one. one. Number, number one. It's number one. Number one. The final one I have, and probably the villain that I was most disappointed didn't make it into these games, is actually the ventriloquist and the true Scarface persona. 
And what I mean by that is that Scarface the puppet or the doll or the marionette, whatever you want to call him, he does appear throughout the series several times. He shows up in the warden's office in Arkham Asylum. He shows up being manhandled by Joker in the asylum closing scene uh, before Joker. I guess it's like before the final boss, you see Joker mess around and be voicing the Scarface doll and then he throws it away. Uh, we do know as well that this doll was actually obtained by the Penguin in Arkham City. He was put on display in the museum. And there is some extended lore in the comics and other things like that that shows that copies of the doll were created by Muggsy Binks. This was a Joker henchman and one is actually seen in the GCP evidence lockup in Arkham Knight. Now, one of the things that's very interesting about the ventriloquist is the lore behind him. Now, yes, a lot of people say, well, the ventriloquist himself, the man, he has schizophrenia and multiple personality. He has all this, all these mental issues, right, that allow him to sort of operate Scarface as a doll and work together with him. That said, there is always sort of an element of, well, is there something supernatural about the doll? Is it always him? Is there something more to it? That could have been really fascinating to actually get into and study, but sadly instead Scarface himself, that persona, that crime lord, he was relegated to just being an Easter egg. He showed up a few times in some display cases or being mocked and thrown around, and then we just never see him. It would have been really cool to actually see this character come to life. This would have really fit something like Arkham Asylum where we're really digging into the crazy side of the Batman rogues gallery. But alas, Ventriloquist was forgotten. Now these are my picks for the five villains that I would have included in the Batman Arkham franchise that were either referenced to or could have made really good additions to the rosters and help flesh out the storylines. Uh, what do you think? I'm actually interested. What are your thoughts on these villains? Would you have liked to see any of them, none of them, all of them? How would you have liked to have seen them actually incorporated into the games? That's an interesting question as well that I would love to read in the comments down below, even though I don't actually, I was gonna say don't read, even though I don't answer all the comments, I do my best to read all of them and scroll through them. So, hey, I'm interested to hear your take. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy this channel. I really do appreciate it. We are continuing to grow more every day and I appreciate all of you, your breathtaking. Leave a like if you enjoyed, a dislike if you disliked it, both help me and I'll see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day and as always everybody, stay shway.